Hi everyone and welcome to episode 287 Aussie Tech Heads. This is Thursday the 26th of April 2012. How are you all? Welcome to the lounge live.thesecrethub.com. How are you going? Good, good, good I hope. Uh, what else has been going on this week? We had Anzac Day yesterday, uh, dawn service. Hope everyone got down there and had some fun and uh, enjoyed, the, uh, enjoyed the moment and whatever. Did a few marches and uh, whatever. Went back to the RSL, had a few beers, had some brekkie, good stuff. All right, uh, let's say hello to the panel. Hello, Eric. Hello, Glenwood. How are you going? Hello, good, thank you. And uh, what's been happening with you this week? I oh, know, Anzac Day in the middle of the week. Made today feel like Monday. It does, doesn't it? It does. And just threw me out, but um, that's all right. Good on the diggers. Mm. And uh, you wouldn't believe who's here tonight. Will. Oh, Will. <laughs> How, you go- How you going, Will? How we doing, guys? It's been a while. Yeah, have you, and now Will's been. Uh, if you haven't been following the show, I think you must. You've been out for a month or so, Will. Yeah, something like that. Um, so you, you've rebooted. Needed a bit of time. Yeah, I needed a bit of time to reboot, basically. <laughs> Boot good. up the arse or reboot? <laughs> Either. Well, you know that mine. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So you've been working hard. You've been, uh, yeah, fixing a lot of cars, a lot of batteries in and out, and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's the thing. I, I literally got home, you know, 10 minutes ago or, what, 7.30. So, mm. you know, it's just been, it's ridiculous. And now that cold weather's coming on, of course, we're getting busier too. So, uh, so yeah. So just so also what to make people aware for the next few weeks, TBT will be coming back. It's just going to be a few weeks. It's going to have a bit of a overhaul and a redesign. And I've got to... Uh, it is going to count back. We're going to have hopefully Frosty and PA and a few other people coming back to the co-host. So just bear with me on that one. Good stuff. And um, yeah, so it's still going to be Tuesday nights, or all or, or will be revealed. Not sure uh, as yet. It's it's a work in progress. I've got a few ideas on things I want to do. Yeah. Uh, but who knows what will actually <laughs> eventuate. So. <laughs> all right. So um, so that's good. So um, yeah, good stuff. Now. What else has been going? There's a lot been going on. Will have you been keeping up with the Android side of things? Oh, a few bits and pieces. Look, when when you're not, when, oh, I have really haven't had a lot of time. I've been following, uh, you know, tweets from a few people and Facebook when I can, and you know, I was droid here and there. Um, but really, it's been really hard to to sort of keep on top of things. Although you know, there's been a few relatively decent developments in the last couple of weeks which is which has helped hmm. but, so how's uh, all your android devices going all the so we're all kicking along all right and keeping good yeah they're still good the htc's still going well sonia's old mozart thing finally died but we had a uh i didn't realize that when i signed up with telstra but i actually got the extended warranty and uh the first 12 months is repair and the next 12 months is just a straight replace so um 12 months and one week into it her phone died and i thought oh here we go i'm never gonna you know so the get first, another one so the first 12, i walked in there and they went oh yeah here you go have so, a new one so the first 12 months <laughs> is repair but the second 12 months is replace yep that that's that's us yep. about isn't it um, normal but normal normal things well i think the idea is that at the end of 12 months they're not really keeping spare parts for that phone anymore um and if they've got that particular phone in stock, you'll get it as a replacement. If they don't have that phone in stock, mm. you'll get the equivalent replacement. Right. So did they give you a Nokia? <laughs> so we ended up waiting, I think it was a day, literally, and they gave us the same, the new phone back. So. Oh, yeah, that's all right. It, uh, it was good. So. All right. All right. But, well, I've only got about another five months to go, and hopefully five months till the... <laughs> <laughs> till the uh, iPhone 5, this new, whatever they call it, a titanium or Lithuanian oh, bloody cover or liquid something. Metal. Yeah. Yeah. Liquid metal. Lithuanian. Liquid knuckles. <laughs> yeah, one of those ones. <laughs> liquid liquid metal. Yeah. So we'll... Um, <laughs> rumour. The rumour has it. Rumour has it. <laughs> so I can't wait for that. Five more months. Well, what are, we, what are we? October, I finish, and we're in, well, you can call it May. So, yeah, five months. <laughs> call it May. I'm pretty keen. All pretty of keen. May, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, you're hanging out. Yeah, I am hanging. All right. Now, um, 
You can you can contact us if you feel like you have to. Oh, Glenn, Will, or Eric at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Skype us through the show with a Skype at Aussie Tech Heads. And uh, as always, live.thesecrethub.com for the live recording of the show Thursday nights. It's normally out on, on the uh, iTunes probably the same night, later Thursday night. The video is probably Friday, something like that. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and also people listening to the radio stream, um, it's obviously not live tonight, but... I promise I'm getting on top of that. I've got to get all the shows sorted and I'm working on it. Yep. <laughs> I've just, I actually just remembered last week that I even had the audio stream. So, <laughs> Oh, right. Well, there you go. Well, look, there's another little show on the audio stream too, which I think is just, it just goes around and around. Mark's got himself a new show and uh, he's uh, just sitting back talking. Oh, has he? What's it called? It's called The Den and he, he's what? done a few episodes now. It's um, Look, it's uh, just a bit mm. of a chin wag. Guy sitting around, got some musos. Who is? Who does he chin wear with? Does he talk to himself? Uh, he gets sometimes, quite a few different people on there. Sometimes, yeah. He gets uh, some musos, uh, some uh, maybe life philosophers. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> but some, some of it's not bad. Actually, it's, it's on the radio, uh, radio.thesecrethub.com. Uh, but there's also yeah, going to be... To add, I've got to add some more to that. <laughs> yeah, but there's also... Um, I'm putting up on iTunes, so you can have a little download for it. Uh, if you wish. So that's coming, 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 coming. That reminds me too, speaking of Mark, I was speaking to him on Skype the other night and in the middle of the conversation, Skype popped up off screen and a full screen ad. Just straight over the top of everything. Started oh, playing the audio, love, love video, Microsoft. whole lot. Yeah. Love Microsoft. <laughs> love well, it. well, we had something so like... That was good. We had a problem with Skype today, didn't we, Eric? We were, we were having a chat and we had to, to share our screen because I had an issue with something. And like I always do Thursdays, and uh, and I couldn't share my screen on the free version, so yeah, they've they've canned it. You can't do a share screen now unless you've got a paid subscription. So you, you can do it on Hangout then. That's right. So that's why we said I said stuff Skype. Let's go on a Hangout. That's right. We just said get rid of this garbage. But anyway, that's that's the way they want to go. That's the way they want to go. All right. And you watch them lose money hand over fist. They're very clever, Microsoft. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Now speaking of Samsung, as I was before. And look, I don't know. Is it just the phones I should be wary about, or is it is it just everything in general? But uh, Samsung Series Nine Australian launch pricing has been revealed. MacBook Air, a uh, MacBook Air competitor, thirteen point three inch Series Nine netbook, notebook. Yes, yes, yes. The Series Nine weighs in at one point one six kilograms, and MacBook Air is one point three five. So, um. Yeah, look, now I've got a few pictures. Uh, let's see if this works. But it's also thinner and lighter uh, than the Acer Aspire. The Series 9 will, will be available in... Hang on, I'll just push this down here so you can see that properly. How's that? The Series uh, 9 will be available in 13.3-inch and 15-inch models, and they will be priced at fifteen ninety nine and eighteen ninety nine respectively. Um, so... Hmm. LED. I'd rather, get a MacBook. I'd rather get a MacBook Air at that price. LED backlit keyboard, nine second boot time, nine second boot time, and uh, is caused in a sing- cased in a single shell aluminium chassis. It holds a 128 gig SSD, four gig RAM, and has a 10 hour battery life. Yeah, look, I was just talking. Allegedly. Yeah, I was talking to the, the uh, lounge before the show because, I, as I was saying to them, look, I really fell in love with the Mac, the MacBook Pro touchpad. It's, uh, yes, with the, the pinch and scroll and all that sort of stuff. Just the the whole the whole thing, just just the whole the whole business. You are know? you becoming a Mac an Apple? Are you becoming an Apple fanboy, Glenn? Oh, I'm half I'm half one, but look, I can't become a full one. I, I look look I, I'd really love to get a uh, the, the MacBook just because of the trackpad. I I like it that much. I really do. But uh, for what I need, are you it talking for, about the Air or the one? Are you talking about the Air or the one Kim's got? The one Kim's got. But they'd be all the same, aren't they? The MacBook Pro, yeah. Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're good. They're a good little unit, yeah. But, uh, but but for what I need it for, like, you know, I need it, I need a Windows machine. And I know you put Windows on it. Don't talk yeah. to me about that. But uh, I need a Windows no, machine. No, no, Windows machine. You've got to have both. I agree. You've got to have both. But, Definitely. But I want, a, I want a new laptop for myself, but I just can't get a Mac because I just need a Windows machine. If you're going to do what we've discussed in the past, what you're going to do, and you're going to be doing certain things at other people's premises, then you will need a 
are Windows because the majority of your clients will be Windows. Well, that's right. So that and look, I just love the way you can sit at the, the MacBook and just flip through things, you know, without without your fingers leaving that touchpad. That's that's a bonus. But anyway, yeah, yeah, agree. That's, anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's get off that. Now, I did have I had another. Uh, while we're talking about Apple, do you want to you want to do a few Apple stories? If you want to. All right. Why not? <laughs> Which one did you want to have in mind? Uh, of your, have you got some? I've just got the earnings report. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I've got here that um, Apple tickets for Apple Worldwide Developer Contrast scheduled scheduled for June 11 through the June 15 at the San Francisco Moscone West Convention Center sold out in two hours. Yeah, in about two hours. Yeah, fifteen hundred ninety nine dollars a ticket. Apple said it will share the technical sessions from the event free of charge on its developer website for those who were unable to attend. That's nice of them. And the event, which drew in attendees from more than 60 countries last year, will offer the Apple developer community sneak peeks into the planned enhancements for iOS and the OSX platforms. So it's a bit of a uh, bit of a must uh, must go to for little devs. Yes. Yeah. So you had some uh, earnings. Have some earnings now. This is a fairly long earnings um, analysis, but I'll but I'll, I'll summarise it. Uh, posted a uh, profit of uh, nearly $12 billion for the quarter. Um, what else have you got here? Uh, outstripped Wall Street estimates, 94% up on the same quarter last year. Now I've got here Apple's iOS beats out competition when it comes to its app count. It's got 600,000 apps uh, against yep. the 350,000 in the uh, Android site. The, uh, How many uh, in uh, Android? 300,000. Well, that's still not too bad. No, it's not too bad. It's uh, booming sales of iPad and iPhones. According to Apple, it sold four, and also it sold four million Macs during the quarter, a seven yep. percent increase over over the the same quarter a year ago. And uh, Apple said it sold thirty five point one million iPhones in the second quarter, an eighty eight percent jump from last year. Yes, eleven point. The good, the scary statistic is they've sold 67 million iPads since the first iPad was released. It took them two years to sell 67 iPads, mm. and it took them 22 years to sell 67 Macs. Yeah, that's, they're going great guns. Uh, uh, its total profit for the quarter, right? For the quarter, its profit. 12 billion. Yeah, rising 93% to 11.6 billion. Wow, that's in one quarter. That's equivalent to, well, fifty billion a year, effectively. Yeah, that's massive. And cash free cash flow from operations was fourteen billion, because profits always a little bit different to cash flow. Yeah, so money massive. out, money in, net fourteen billion, bank it. Massive. So <laughs> after they started the month with fourteen billion dollars, started the quarter ninety days, they had fourteen billion dollars less than they mm. did at the end of 90 days. So after 90 days, they had another $14 billion in their account. Mm. That is unbelievable. It is. And look, I've got another. I'll just continue on with Apple while, well, while we're here. Um, Apple shipped, this is uh, now talking Australia, last quarter, Apple shipped 178,892 Macs. Uh, this includes desktop and PCs, but not iPads. Now, Apple's 32% quarterly growth is compared to HP's 6% decline. And Acer yep. grew 15.5% and Dell at 10.5%. Now, I've got a little table here. If we can uh, just grab that up. And now what this shows us is, there we go, is that the top five Australian PC vendor unit shipment for the, uh, for the fourth quarter is... Apple coming in at one, two, three, fourth. So beating Ooh. Lenovo. So HP, Acer, Dell, and Apple. And then the others can please themselves. But look at the profits the, 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 the three above Apple are making compared to what Apple are making. Yeah, yeah. The, the ta- I don't think that table doesn't show you the profit, does it? It just says the share. But yeah, no, I'll it won't show you yeah. profits, but I can guarantee you they're making a tenth of what Apple's making in profits. Mm. Mm. This is true. This is true. All right. Well, that, that's good. That's good. Oh, dogs. All right. Yes, my neighbours. 
And now, well, and, well, and my neighbour's pets as well, either or other. Now, <laughs> did you um, have any comments on Apple, Will, or you'd rather just move on? Um, I haven't really had had uh, much to do with them at all lately. I haven't even seen, other than the fact they got a Trojan last week. Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, and the week before. I got, and the week and before. The week. And I got email. I've been getting emails from um, certain big business customers that I used to look after. And they're like, oh, we thought we didn't need virus protection. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> and now all our systems are infected. Well, you don't. Are we? You don't need. <laughs> and, uh, well, you don't. You and don't. I'm like, oh, well, you, will, you know, I've been telling you for years you'll need it, you know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need anything if you. If, if you want to get all the things, keep off the, the porn sun. sites and you'll be fine. That's what you should have told them. Now here's something that you... no, well, somebody sent somebody sent um, e- a private email through their work account or re- opened their private email through their work account and sent it through the whole through the whole net- network. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, well done. Yeah, now here, here's one just going on with the uh, uh, with phones and everything that Mozilla. The uh, creators of Firefox are uh, releasing their own operating system for a mobile phone. Mm. Oh, here we so, go. Um, yeah. <laughs> is, is, is this a bit of a case of um, it's not going to go anywhere? They're just too late. And I don't yeah, think pretty that. Much. Yeah, God. Yeah, it's Windows, too... seven, Windows Phone can't make a dent. I mean, you know, Jesus, how are these guys going to make a. Oh, you know what? If they've got a user interface that's nicer than Windows, they'll yeah. overtake Windows. And it wouldn't be hard. That's no, not really, is it? Mobile phones running an operating system developed by the makers of Firefox will go on sale in late 2012. The first handsets running Mozilla's Boot to Gecko, or the B2G software, will be available in Brazil on the Telefonica Vivo mobile network. Uh, it gets the name Gecko because that is the part of Firefox that decides how to, dis- to display pages in a web browser. Wow. Whoopie do. <laughs> Good for it. <laughs> well, good luck to them. I hope they've got a nice interface. The Palm OS had a nice interface, but they just had these very underpowered devices that just ruined it. But yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I would have bought a Palm if the if the hardware was wasn't epoxy. Because they, they, they actually really had nice a really interface. nice. Yeah, they, and Web OS was quite nice. Oh, though, it's but brilliant! It was just it's brilliant. But they just, HP just you know they just tried to go on the cheap side, and you know we yeah. all know what happened. I don't know what. And Nokia's going the other way. Nokia had really nice, simple, easy to use, straightforward operating system, and then they introduced their Symbian OS, which wasn't too bad. It was still relatively straightforward, relatively easy to use, and they went, "Hey, Windows looks good. Let's make it look like that. Let's make yeah. it as cumbersome as yeah. impossible add, to add, use. Add, 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 yeah, add everything that you don't need. People will never use, and, and then in the end, they can't even find how to make a phone call." Look, I, yeah. think, I think Windows have left it too late, personally. No, look, I don't think anyone's left it too late. I think what they've done is they've they've their interface. It's 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 about the user. You got mm. they've got to take the engineers out of the out of the equation. Let them do what they do best, and get some proper interface designers up front, because they've got to start thinking about the user. That's their problem. And yeah. if Firefox gets this right, and puts it in a you know, a quad core or a dual core handset with one gigahertz or something. They've got a nice interface. It'll overtake Windows. The oh. interface on Windows is awful. Mm. Yeah, but but to overtake, you know, you've got to have the. the well, you whole, won't overtake. The eco- you might not overtake, but you'll be a good competitor. You got to, Where's the ecosystem well, at, and stuff like? Look at BlackBerry. I mean, the BlackBerry interface is horrible, but because they do have a handful of features that are. Uh, desired by businesses and by governments they're still you know they still have a niche on that market they do but they are going broke very quickly they are but that's my point like only because only because they got lazy yeah exactly i'm not saying you know it's great but that that just goes to show you that if somebody designs you haven't got to design a mainstream operating system you have to just design an operating system that will do exactly what you say it's going to do exactly and if you say it can do this this easily then let it do that yeah mm. and and you know and you know you're trying to make a phone call with window even the guys on windows weekly on on the twitch channel who are big microsoft fanboys 
a slag in the hell out of Windows phone operating system. You know, and these guys love Microsoft stuff. Yeah. Even they're saying this is just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's a story. There's a yeah, story well, here as well that um, Google has announced. Well, I'm just talking about stuff that just sucks. Google has announced that it plans to close down its sync service for BlackBerry smartphones. So, like, they're, they're mm, obviously just... the end of BlackBerry. Oh, yeah, beginning June 1st, Jeez, 2012. A lot of people... I had a BlackBerry about two years ago, and I used to sync my Gmail accounts to the BlackBerry, and it was very easy to do. If they close that down, that's the, 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 the remaining 50% of the users are just going to go, you know mm. what, stuff it, I'm going to get an Android phone or an iPhone. But listen to this... Because they all sync with Gmail, but no listen, problem. Yeah, but listen to this rubbish. Now, I don't know why they actually go down, the, down this actual path, but if you already... So, beginning June 1st, 2012... Uh, Google's ending support for the, the sync for BlackBerry. If you already have the app installed, you'll still be able to use it. However, it will not be yeah. available for download. What's Why not just have it? <laughs> like what if, they should do is have it available for download, but we can't support it. Yeah, It's like yeah. Notebook. It'll be the same thing. You, you'll ha- be able to have it. And you won't really be able to do anything with it, and eventually they hope it'll go away. Well, yeah. that might be a competitive thing too. They don't want... You know, if people go away from BlackBerry because we're because they're closing the API, then they'll just go. Well, I'll just buy an Android instead. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm sure yeah. all twelve customers will be incredibly disappointed. Yeah, that's right. That the bloke <laughs> next door, the last customer <laughs> next door, will be very upset. So apparently, like there is another way to sync. Well, everything. even I'll put it this but, way. Um, well, the Australian government have because they were doing security and um, and what do you call it relevancy bloody tests on the iPhone to see because you know they're all on blackberries in the australian government because of mm. the security and before they went to you know other smartphones like an android or an iphone they decided that they're going to run the iphone through some tests i think it took them 12 months and it's been approved for use throughout all of australian government federal government so yeah, that's yeah. it you know you lost if you know that's a lot of phones yeah well like yeah yeah i don't know what's going on but anyway but uh, loo- oh you know they're just bad bad interface designers they just didn't get it I never liked them from the start. I didn't, I didn't like the keyboard on them. I thought that was crazy. But um, no, look, it took a while to get used to. But you know, they did have a they did have a really good purpose, and they were they are very secure, and they're great for governments and business who have got sensitive information. But mm. they just didn't keep up. They just didn't keep up. They got they got complacent and lazy. Yes, and by and by keeping up, this the type of thing you need to by keeping up is uh, is meant. It, what me, we mean by that, you got to keep developing, you got to keep uh, innovating. R and D, R and D, all this sort of stuff. That's right. Now, Adobe launches software suite into the Creative Cloud. Now, this could be, the, well, this is the way to go. Now, Adobe's Creative Cloud lets users download and install Creative Suite Six. For a very low price, it's a it's a uh, subscription though, which is uh, you know you can I don't really like subscriptions, but if if look it's cheaper than buying it. Uh, users can sign up for the Creative Cloud membership at fifty dollars a month US. In con- in contrast, the whole suite costs you around about two and a half thousand dollars. So look, there's a lot of months in two and a half thousand dollars. Plus, in twelve months, you would automatically you would just upgrade to you know. Because you're on subscription, you would just upgrade to the latest sort of uh, yep. software. Yep. So that's good. Uh, yeah, look, in that case, if I was a user of that product, I would probably do the monthly subscription in this case. Um, membership in the Creative Cloud, users can download and install 14 Adobe Creative 6 applications, including Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and Dreamweaver CS6. Now, custom- that's not bad. Yeah. Okay, I was just going through the, the list of the the possible apps. So you've got Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Acrobat Pro, Flash Catalyst, Flash Professional, Flash Builder, <laughs> Dreamweaver, Fireworks, Contribute, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Audition, On Location, On Call, Bridge, Device Central, and Media Encoder. And, and Flash. Okay, so out of those, half of those are a free app anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. And Adobe Reader. <laughs> no, no, no reader. You don't get reader. Oh no! You just get the uh, the creation program. <laughs> so the customers can also use Creative Cloud for twenty nine dollars a month, uh, and if you want to use an older version, CS three, CS four, CS five, and five point five. So in addition, Adobe's desktop application Creative Cloud connection will support the synchronization. 
Now, Creative Cloud membership includes up to 20 gig of cloud storage with uh, additional storage purchase options coming soon. So, look, I don't know. That's not too bad because some of these, you know, apart from the free ones, they're right, like Will's right, some of the, a lot of those ones are free. But for the, the, for the $50 a month one where they're pretty expensive to buy, for 50 bucks a month, that's $600 a year. You'd upgrade every two years, right? So that's $1,200. Mm. And the, the suite costs 2600 So you're still only paying half what you'd normally pay. Well, yes and no. But, I mean, how long does, you know, Photoshop, for example, we're still running Photoshop 3. We actually went up to 5.5. And it didn't do half of the things that 3 did. So we've gone back to Photoshop 3. And that's a, what, seven or eight year, nine year old program now. Sure, it was a $300 mm. investment then. But I, look, I think it depends on what you want to do. Some you know, people would, would, would probably use a lot of the, feature, the new features, and other people wouldn't. You yeah, know, like well, I probably right. wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't. You know, I'd probably be happy with Photoshop 3. And I mean, the other yeah, question is do we really that. need another cloud based service? <laughs> No, I mean, no, we don't. We're up to like forty-seven now. I mean, how many, how many more cloud-based services do we need to do it, something we do every day? This like, reminds me of the cloud-based services. Reminds me, it's 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 not well, it doesn't remind me. It's like the uh, location-based apps. There are a thousand of them. Mm. I think how many? You know, I tell you what. If I load them all on my phone, everybody from anywhere in the world will know where the hell I am. I'm just, yeah. you know, everything you do has got location. Would you? Can you but, want to turn on your this you want to turn on well no i just want to tweet i just want to use facebook i just want to use my camera but what's, what's going to say you'll notice now it's gone the other way like there was foursquare hootsuite there was all these um location apps now pretty much other than foursquare the rest of them basically got dissolved into twitter into facebook into yeah they're all Google getting bought out instagram so, just got bought so yeah exactly yeah, so that, now that that's when you consolidation happens very quickly yeah, so when you use an app now like foursquare you can do the check-in location part of it so i guess it'll be the same thing with these cloud services you're going to, you've got sky drive you've got the new um google g drive which i'll talk about later um you've got boxy you've got um box you've got all these you know picasa web you've got all these online storage solutions is the same thing going to happen with those are they going to find some sort well, of see, common this, ground yeah that's right well the thing is too how many places do you, do I really want my photos to be sitting on? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't want my some photos up in Picasa, some photos up on Instagram, some so, photos up on on um, uh, what's the other one? Flickr. Uh, well, now Adobe. Um, you know, Dropbox. there's so many of these photo <laughs> sharing cloud services. I'm thinking, no, get rid of it. I only share my photo in one in two places. But that's okay. And that's on on the um on on Apple's mobile me service or iCloud. And the other one is Facebook. I was going to say, yeah, Facebook now. I mean, it's effectively, if you really wanted to, it is. it's That's virtually no an infinite storage because you can put all, every, all the sorts of stuff up there and that I've never seen anywhere anything about how much you can store. There is no, there's no limit. It, it actually, Facebook is, they did analysis of this about six months ago, it is the largest photo sharing site in the world. Yeah. yeah. Because people is going, well, you know what, if I put it up there, the people that I want to see it can see it. Mm. And at the same time, I can download it any time. I can upload whatever resolution that I like. It's effectively a photo sharing. You can have albums on there. Yeah. You know, and the I best part I don't is you I don't use Picasa or anything like that. I use Picasa because it's easy to share. Like if you've got half a dozen photos and you want different people to see them, you send them a link. So I use it for, for quirky things like that. But as a rule, so maybe yeah, specific right. items. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I, um, use, I use Picasa. I, I, I like it. I use it because um, I suppose all my photos are there. If I'm going to put something on Facebook, it'll also be replicated on Picasa because that is my mm. storage. That is my backup. That's your main, your main storage. Well, mm. I'm similar. I use Apple's as my main, and I put only selective ones up on on yeah. Facebook. And if I've got quirky ones, then I'll have private links to the Apple photo yeah. stream. Well, see, That's I've right. got uh, Dropbox now. Every photo I take on the phone, five seconds after I've taken it, it's, it's uploaded to Dropbox. And then so I use Box. That'll now. take you I, a while. I Where was using <laughs> <laughs> I was using Dropbox, but Mate. I use Box. Box.net. And you just, just like the name. Up, I got fifty gig free. So 
I've got the same thing. Everything automatically gets uploaded, and it's fully distri- you know, distri- distributable. Dis- distributable. Yeah. Yep. Um, you, you just like you just like the name box. <laughs> but look, I, I chose I chose um, Picasso. I was doing. I was had. I had my album locally with Adobe. Um, what's the F- Photo Express or something? Whatever it was. Oh yeah. Photo. Yeah something and look it, it just the, the, another version come out my version sort of pretty much just died it was pretty yucky it didn't back up properly and everything so look i went to picasso i i spent the time i did all the facial recognition and all this sort of stuff and look, like hell am i going now to change <laughs> to another one yeah that's right like, no that's right. way no way so look I, i've done me um I've, I've i've increased me space with google and so I'm, I'm all systems go. I'm happy with that. Uh, Rock and roll. Picasso is good I'm for not me. Touching Google. And uh, yeah, well, I think well, we're going to talk. While about we're on software, yeah. While we're on software, do you want me to talk very quickly about the how? And we all know this is true, but there was an article in it during the week about how Aussies are being ripped off with software, and they've got the comparison prices here. Do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll read out a couple. We'll do that, and then we'll we'll do this story, and then we'll go because uh, Garth's got another little app. And then yes, so we'll right. do that, then Garth, then come back for an Audible uh, pick. Yeah, got that too. All right. Um, all right. If you, if you download uh, Windows 7 Pro from a US online store, $200. The same product on the Australian website is $450. Right. No, that's one example. Um, the popular Adobe CS5 Photoshop software which retails online in the US for 2599 which is the one you were talking about, is mm. sold in Australia for nearly $4,000. That's ridiculous. It is It is ridiculous. I don't understand. Like, okay, like I know the article. Well, well, these, well, these are the responses, right? Look, go back 20 years when they only made them in wherever they were pressing them, India or Singapore, and they had to ship them out of a warehouse in in the state just let's assume for one minute they went back to america and then you ordered it and they had to ship it to you right so you've got all those costs yeah but that doesn't happen anymore there are no costs anymore the ACCC have said there is zero cost of the delivery i think because we've got it's a... uniform around the world it's hosted on an akamai server somewhere mm. and I'm... that's it and I... you, it doesn't matter where you're downloading it from why were you paying extra just because you're downloading it from here now, look, I don't know what the, the issue is with why these things are so expensive, um, like in Australia. Like, I really don't understand. I don't think that they're just out to rip us off. Like, I, I really don't. I, or maybe in a small way, but, but at the end of the day, like, you know, we're a small population on the other end of the, on the other side of the world, and an even smaller population of a full Adobe suite using uh, users. So there's not many people that are going to pay four grand for, um, you know, relatively not many people that are going to pay four grand for, no, a, for Adobe Suite. So why hike up the price just for us? Like why pick us out? You know, like Look, why? Th- there's I, I, one, there's more one example it. here, AVG Software, right? You know, the, the antivirus software. They've got an example here why it co- their software is 40% more in Australia, right? And this makes perfect sense. But... For, does, it doesn't mean this is, makes perfect sense for the other two. Um, they said they've got, in Australia, they've got a 35-person workforce who gives seven-day-a-week support. Uh, we all know, and, you know, Glenn, you, you and I have talked about this, that wages and rents in Australia are a lot higher than mm. a lot of other places. So, hence, their markup has to pay for the extra cost that they incur in Australia. That I understand when you've got actual support people on the ground. Yeah, yes. But, when you're just clicking on a website to yeah. download something, there is no freaking excuse. No, that's, and especially when like I, I downloaded the um, the Sony Vegas, the editing software I've got, and yeah, I went to the US site and did it. It was cheaper than the Australian site. Yeah, so it is. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, there must be something else to it. Like it can't. They're not just picking on us. We're a small, a small population. So I, look, there's no value I, I in picking on us. You know what I think it is, and I might be wrong, and it's just a theory. I think that Australia are notorious for being fast movers with technology. We're, we're very quick to, you know, first-line movers. Yep. And I think they take advantage of that. And I think, oh, well, we know they're going to buy it. You know, the Australians are very tech-savvy as a, as a nation, and everyone buck. knows that. Mm. Um, mm. And they think, cool. 
and you always get cream off the top. The first movers will always you'll always charge them more. But do you think that if someone's going to be paying four thousand dollars, that they'd have some clue of what they're doing and probably know that it's cheaper on another site? On the yeah, US it would be site? definitely. Look, I look. There are some people that my my sister and her um, husband deal with, and they sell high end um, IT equipment for broadcasts and all that sort of stuff. My my, my brother in law just came back from NAB right in 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 Las Vegas, and the clients that he works for, they don't buy anything in Australia. They, for example, they're off in America, all the you know doing their, on their you know with their uh, booths and everything and showing off their wares. While they're there, they're stocking up. Yeah, yeah. Well, why not? You know, they're they're not stupid enough to just come back here and buy it. Yeah. They'll just go to a they'll go to a Adobe there and get it delivered to a US address because this is their hotel room. Yeah. Bang. Mm. But would you say then, in, in, in sticking with the AVG example, would you say that, okay, well, Microsoft probably does have a big presence in Australia. They have a huge presence here. So, therefore, they're, would it, is it acceptable that their products are, are more? Well, okay, first question. When's the last time you got decent support from Microsoft? Um, I haven't actually asked them for because technical support. Because a lot of the time you can get it on their website. Yes. Same with Apple, for that matter. Yeah, I like... Right? Oh, the, so... The Microsoft okay, so support there's su- these support days. costs and support costs are negligible. Yeah, um, they don't pay rent in Microsoft. Microsoft don't pay rent because they own all the real estate in every office that they go all around the world. They own the premises, just like Apple does. Right. For right. the most part, Apple doesn't own all the premises, but for the most part, they own them. So there's no rent issue. Their salaries in Australia wouldn't be any higher than they are in the United States because if that was the case, everyone in America would want to work here. Everyone in America at Microsoft in America would want to get transferred to Australia if our salaries mm. were that high. They go, oh, put me over there. They're paying that like four hundred grand. I'm yeah. only getting two hundred in Seattle. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So, you know, so it's not that. So it's just a crock. I think it's just we are used to it. We are used to paying that price, and they are used to charging us that price. Mm. Well, Michael, as, this, as in this story, a Microsoft spokesman yesterday blamed its 125% markup on a number of factors, saying every market is different and prices vary by region, being determined by a variety of location-specific factors, including but not limited to local market conditions. Well, that's the big one because we're suckers. Local taxes, well, it's more than 10%. Duties, there are none. And in the case, there are none. And in the case of a physical retail and logistics. So they don't have any retail outlets here. Except mm. for Harvey Norman or Harris Technology. Mm. That's crap. That's absolute garbage. Mm. So I don't know what the story There's is. There's no way. But anyway, anyone that listens to this show The only tax knows. they'd be talking about is GST, 10%. Yep. Anyone that That's listens it. to this show is smart enough to go to another site. And, uh, well, they've got some uh, comments. Go to another site and get it. And get it to li- you know what? Go to Amazon. Well, so if you want to box software, go to Amazon and, and just ask them to deliver Adobe to your Australian address. They so comment in the lounge is... Um, People are using a, a paid anonymizer. So is, is that like someone? What is that? I don't even know what that is. What is that? I, I masks your IPs basically, so that because what happens is you go to a website and they geo oh, yep. geo oh, yeah. okay. yep. um, yeah. your IP address. So even if you go to an American site, for example, as soon as you enter the shop, it'll switch you back to AU pricing. So you yeah. basically just mask your IP so that they yeah. don't know where you're coming from. Mm. What about Hotspot Shield? Will that work? Yeah, and anything that changes your IP um, or bounces you off a server in that country, yeah, there are a few hotspot, different options. Hotspot, um, hotspot IP gives you an gives you a um, an American IP address, so that that'd yeah. work. That'd Some work. of the, the paid ones are generally better because they're quicker. Yes, Biggest problem agree. with agree. with Hotspot and the free ones is that oh, they can be slow. just absolutely dog yeah, slow. Yeah, dog but slow. some of the paid ones are fine because you can actually. Um, they're that quick. You can actually stream, you know, um, yes. Hulu and, and well, that's the thing. Like that. That's so. the thing. That's what you want to do. Hulu and you know, even sites like TV dot com or NBC, because mm. a lot of the American networks have um, their shows online the day after they've put it on air. We can't watch it here because of our IP address. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's look. It's um, and in, and case in point, probably too that the uh, the II net court victory that happened last uh, earlier this week. Well, you know, late last week. Mm. Um, Speaking of stealing. Yeah, so IINet, like I know I said we'd, we'd do Garth. We better do Garth. We'll talk about IINet when we come back, eh? All right. We'll, we'll, you, go, we'll, go, on, right. we'll go and see what Garth's up to this week because he, he's got a – oh, he's been working hard, poor Garth. 
Welcome, my OSs. It is Garth and Glenn here once again, and Garth has got a cheapy for us. It's not free. Not but free. Ge- but, geez, it's a cheapy. It's not much, is it, Glenn? That's 99 cents. What do you got, Garth? Oh, God, bloody hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are we sorry, keeping you sorry. up there? Are we keeping you up? I'm tired. Oh, you, I know. Are you tired? <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, yeah. no. We're going to have to do something about it. Do you want me to splash her? No, it'll be right. Okay. <laughs> Another beer over my head, maybe. All right. Sorry. Anyway, back to the oh, back yeah, to the sorry, app, sorry. which is I tired. Oh, that is the app. Oh, that sorry. is the app. <laughs> I tired. So, you know, I don't know about you, but you know, if you're out there listening to podcasts, listening to audio books, stuff like that, it's nice nice time to do that. Is in bed, going to sleep. Yeah. Um, problem is, you get you wake up in the morning and you've missed the second half of your podcast or whatever yeah, it is that you're listening right. to. You can't find where you're up to in your book. Oh. You've got to try and rewind. It's all a pain in the Bum. something or other. <laughs> yes. And um, I Tired has, it's a, a novel way of, of um, combating that. Rather than setting a sleep timer for a period where you don't necessarily know how long, you know, you can set it for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, that sort of sleep timer. Yeah. This one, you can, you can set the time um, and as long as you have, take some action, like touch the screen, touch the volume control. Right. Um, and that's what I usually do. I have the headphones in my ear going to sleep. Yep. Um, just click up on the volume control or down on the volume control. Um, it resets the timer. Nice. So what will happen is it'll, at a, after, say, eight minutes, that's how long I've got mine set for, it'll just have a soft little burbling noise in the background. Yep. Um, once you hear that, you need to take do some something. action, do something. Yep. Just say, look, I'm still awake here. Um, if... If you don't do anything, it's quite enough so that, you know, if you've already fallen asleep, it won't wake you up. But what it will do is then go, okay, he fell asleep then, and it will rewind the, the track that you're listening to back to when you last took an action. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. pretty good, isn't it? That is it's good. Really, it really is handy yeah. because, you know, it rewinds you back to when you last said, I'm still awake. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I looked at this, because uh, Garth told me about this, and I looked at it, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be good? And I suppose this is going to come as another feature later on, another one. But wouldn't it be good if, like, maybe with the 4S now, with Siri, you could, instead of touching it, you could just go, yeah, 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 yeah I'm still, still awake. awake. Yep. <laughs> Leave me alone. But yes. Yeah, you know what? For me, it's easy just to touch the screen <laughs> just yeah. to, to do that problem. But, yeah, no, that would be a handy feature, wouldn't it? Yeah. If yeah. it could hear some, yeah, if it monitored noise, it, you know, it wouldn't even need Siri. It just needs to monitor noise in the background, I suppose. Mm. So, yeah, so the yeah. features, um, other features could be prove, yeah, by prove alertness by double tapping, shaking the device, adjusting the device volume, that's, as we said, listening in the dark, the screen contrast can be adjusted uh, via a vertical swipe, swipe. works yeah. with the screen locked through double tapping and shaking, voice Voice over accessibility support. Well, there you go. Yeah. Must have come out just recent. Well, there you go. They've, um, yeah, just, uh, it's updated it a few times. There was a few buttons that were unlabeled, so another great developer in terms of being responsive. A few buttons that weren't properly labeled correctly for voiceover. Sent him a letter, fixed it up. Yeah. So that actually the voiceover was just released in version 1.5. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, as we said, 99 cents. Uh, I tired. It's, it's great. It, it looks good. I don't good. think it's a very well known app, but it's a really good one. Yeah. yeah, so go and have a look at that, and uh, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. That's a good one, Garth. Excellent. Thanks for that. See, See you, you later, guys. See you next time. Oh, all right, good on you, Garth. Now, yeah, he's, uh, you can watch uh, see Garth's video reviews just in their their uh, individual reviews, if you know what I mean. I uh, just go to the AussieTechHeads.com.au website. You don't have to watch the whole show just to get the review. But all the reviews are there. They're listed under iOS reviews somewhere there on the website. Go check it out. Also, the show notes, don't forget, are also on the uh, website. Normally, they're up before or as the show starts. They go live, and uh, so you can follow along and, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you want to do <laughs> as you're listening. Um, all the good stuff. Now, um, all right, uh, Audible, what's going on this week? Did you have a chance to listen to any, Eric? I've um, stumbled upon a an author, which I I have read her books when I was at university. Yeah. And I thought to myself, when I was looking around t- uh, today, and I thought, ooh, that's interesting. I wonder if there are any audio books by the same author. And yes, there is. Now the author's name is Anne Rand, and it's A Y N R A N D. Not for everybody. This is this is sort of this sort of topic is not for everybody. It's quite heavy in listening, so you might have to listen to it a f- few times. If you read the book, you'll read the some, some pages. You read over and over again just to get a handle on um, what she's talking about. Her most fa- famous book is called The Fountainhead, and 
Atlas Shrugged. That's her most famous two books. Now, the book I'm suggesting that you all have a listen to is called Capitalism, The Unknown Ideal. And the summary goes like this. The foundations of capitalism are being battered by a flood. I just, just on a side note, you'll get a very, you'll get a very good sense of what this woman's about by what I'm about to read. She hates communists. She hates socialism, and she she follows a philosophy called objectivism. Okay, so it's a very heavy concept, but it's a very interesting one. The foundations of capitalism are being battered by a flood of altru- altruism which is the cause of the modern day, the modern world's collapse. This was the view of Ayn Rand, a view so radically opposed to prevailing attitudes that it it constituted a major philosophic revolution. In this series of essays, she presented her stand on the persecution of big business, the causes of war, the default of conservatism and the evils of altruism. Here, is a challenging look at modern society by a woman who was one of the most provocative intellectuals on this American scene. Now, this book, these these series of books was written in the 40s and 50s, and if you listen to them now, you would think this woman could tell what was going to happen 60 years down the track. I was just looking at the copyright, actually, then, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I was going to ask you, it was 1946, 1943, yeah. Yeah. Fountainhead, 1943, and uh, the other one, 46. So the she's obviously not a narrator then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, the, um, the Fountainhead was turned into a movie and the actor, if you can go and you can look it up in um, imdb.com and the the main character, uh, Howard Rourke, was played by Gary Cooper. Right, right. So I'll play a little snippet. Um, where are we? The method of capitalism's destruction rests on never letting the world discover what it is that is being destroyed, on never allowing it to be identified within the hearing of the young. The purpose of this book is to identify it. The guilt for the present state of the world rests on the shoulders of those who are over 40 years old today, with a very few exceptions. Those who, when they spoke, said less than they knew, and said it less clearly than the subject demanded. This book is addressed to the young, in years or in spirit, who are not afraid to know and are not ready to give up. What they have to discover, what all the efforts of capitalism's enemies are frantically aimed at hiding, is the fact that capitalism is not merely the practical, but the only moral system in history. See Atlas Shrugged. The political aspects of Atlas Shrugged are not its theme. Its theme is primarily ethical, epistemological, the role of the mind in man's existence. And politics necessarily is one of the themes consequent. But the epistemological chaos of our age, fostered by modern philosophy, is such that many young readers find it difficult to translate abstractions into political principles and apply them to the evaluation of today's events. You're, you're pretty, there you go. You're, you're pretty right when you said you'd have to listen to it a couple of times to get your head around what she's saying. It's pretty heavy. Mm. It took me a while to get through it. At um, The first book I read was The Fountainhead, and that took me – it was a very thick book. It was something like 800 pages or something. Yeah, right. And in, in small print, mind you. Mm. She small looks print, like... none, of this, none of this Times Roman 12. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ariel 9 or something. She looks <laughs> She looks like a hard woman. If you, I just placed a picture I up looks there. Look, yeah. oh, I'm, I don't suggest for a minute that I agree with everything she says because I think she can get quite extreme. But the tenets, the basics of what she is saying is true. You cannot live in a world where everyone's got their hand out. That's basically it. Yeah. And that's what she calls the, the destruction of modern society by altruism. Everyone's there to just, I need some money, lend me some money, you know, give me the doll, give me this, give me that. It's just, no, you go and freaking work. Now she, and if you still can't get work, then we'll give you the doll. Yeah, so so she so it was the books from yesteryear. Uh, she was born in uh, 1905 and died in March 1982, age 77. So 
So yeah, so she yep. was um she was um. But if you want to get a copy of that book, you can get a copy of that uh, Audible book for free. Go to the AussieTechHeads.com.au website, click on the link, join up, and you can get that one for free. Thirty day free thirty day membership, and uh, you can continue on if you like and and uh, avail yourself of some more great audio entertainment. Over a hundred thousand books, so go and check it out. All right, now where where were we up to? Oh, iinet. What's happened with yes. iinet? They've they won their case. Well, they won. <laughs> they won. They won. They um. So the High Court of Australia, that member, they were involved in the in the um dispute about the the copywriting and the the movie studios said right we're not happy with iinet for like, we think that you're letting your customers download illegal uh, our movies illegally. And they said, no, we've got no control over what they download. The High Court of Australia has unanimously dismissed the film industry's appeal against a lower court decision, absolving IINet's inability for copyright infringements, IINet's liability for copyright infringements by its users. The High Court said had no, it had no direct technical power to prevent its customers from using the BitTorrent system. Uh, the Pirate Bay of Australia, they were pretty happy, uh, was among the among, um, host of organisations to congratulate IINet on the victory. The pirate, the pirate Bay warned that the issue would not die with the High Court ruling and sought more involvement of the public in otherwise closed-door discussions between the government and rights holders. So that's probably what's going to happen now. We're all gonna, they're all going to go and nudge, nudge, wink, wink in the back door room, back room there somewhere, and uh, come up with some. So, what's what's your opinion on this, Glenn and Will? <laughs> well, well, you go, Will. You go first. Doesn't sound. Before I talk about my opinion, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the New South Wales police force will be very happy with the ruling. Um, did you hear but about they, what, what? But but didn't they steal software? Isn't that a little bit different? <laughs> they apparently, according to a UK company, Microfocus, um, have been using. They had a license for six and a half thousand licenses, and they've been just storing them online and downloading them over torrents the, the uh other 30 odd thousand seats they've been using for this particular s- software well like, that's a little bit different so to this i think well it is but it still affects them because they've been they've been downloading them off torrents every time they need an update and they need that software again they just uh go to a yeah, but that's the user will that's the user <laughs> that's the user that they're suing not so su- they're not suing the ip that they use to get the torrent that's no, I realise that, but that's that's my point. Like, it, it's it's still related. Like, the thing is, it, it comes down to what the user does with the available technology. Now, to, bit peer to peer, BitTorrent, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, magnet links, they're all all the same sort of thing, and they have their their foundings in legitimate usage, like things like. Um, you go way back to the old billboards. I mean, there was people uploading and downloading software over the, you know, over the web, or, or at least parts of software, so that you know they could get peer reviews. They could give a copy to their friend. They could do all this. Um, they could do all this sort of thing without having to send them, you know, tape drives and floppy disks and things like that. Um, it's obviously we've got to the point now where yes it is used i would say primarily for illegal file sharing um there's also another story i've been really trying to find because i read it yesterday and i cannot find it stating that hollywood has finally realized that the only way they're going to stop people pirating their shows is to release them to the make public them available and, people yeah, will pay exactly. for it if they make it available and and simple. hollywood's Hollywood's finally woken up to that and they release a statement basically saying that. But uh, I mean, that's the thing, you know. But there is still legitimate users for file sharing through peer to peer, through other sources. That if these sort of laws are allowed to be passed, these big brother laws monitoring what you do with your internet connection that you pay for. Um, I mean, okay, there are possibly a few exceptions to that rule, but as a rule, they should not be involved in any way and part of that is because they can what they call packet monitoring so they can monitor a packet deep packet sniffing your packet sniffing yeah they can basically monitor data being transferred from a particular website or a particular ip address to your house they can't determine what that software what that 
particular chunk of file is. All they can do is monitor where it's going. So you could be legitimately using, um, you know, views or any other number of clients for things like downloading Linux torrents, um, downloading movies that aren't published like um, Zeitgeist, things like that that don't have regular circulation. They're free movies and the cheapest way for them to distribute them was to put them on a file sharing site. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't have any problem with that at all. I think, no. I think that the, I, this, is, this is where I stand on this issue. I, I agree with the ruling and you cannot, cannot – Make the IP, the, the the internet provider, responsible for what their users do. Number no. one. Well, I, if their I, users want to go and break the law, mm. let them break the law. If the if the if the movie studios want to protect their copyright, go after the users or make the stuff available because most of these users, ninety percent of them, and they've done studies on this, are willing to pay for it. Yeah. I don't well, believe anybody should steal anything that isn't theirs because if I was a software developer. Or if you know, for imagine if you know, I'm an, I, I have a, a public practice. That's my that's what I do for a living. Now, if I didn't get paid, I couldn't feed my family. It's a job. It's a mm. career. It's a it's a profession. Now, I believe everyone has a right to earn a living, but if there are people out there who want to break the law, the service provider is not the responsible entity. They are not the police, mm. and then nor should they be. Well, I, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm, I right. ag- I agree with the ruling as well. I think that it's uh it, it is the correct ruling because like where would this stop? Like I mean, like if you wanted to draw an analogy, like now the internet coming into your home comes from the street in through a socket in your wall. So does electricity. If you're going to grow yep. pot, and uh, so what does that mean? The electricity company's going to get sued because you're growing pot. That's right. You're yeah. using you're oh. using their service that's to right. do something illegal. So I think that's the a correct know? decision. I can't see how it could have gone any other way. And the studio, no, me are, neither. A pretty silly. Just end. make it available. I mean, these US mm, studios. That's the answer. That's the look, answer. For example, the Avengers movie came out here in Australia yesterday, mm. a month before it was released in America. It doesn't get released in America till May, which is unusual because it's usually the other way around. It's usually the other way around. Now, if the, and they apparently it's it's a boon. It's just going gangbusters, right? And I'm going to go and watch it. Um, now. You know, you've got all these shows that they that they're showing in America. Release it online for us to pay for. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look, or even things I'm like. I'm happy to pay um, for it. Take your stupid geolocation off your website. So if I want to go and watch, I want to go to discovery.com and I want to watch the latest episode of MythBusters, for example, that was on last night in America, and yep. it's going to be three months before we get it. Three months. Let Talk about it. two years. Yeah, well, let me watch it on your website. Um, what's exactly. the difference? You're still getting ads. You're still getting traffic through your website. I don't understand what, what this fascination with this locking down of locations mm. is. And BBC, iPlot. Uh, so, well, I, I, I understand what it is. It's, it's just it's licensing. They've got geographic licensing because, for example, the free-to-air networks here will buy um, – a season of let's what do you want to call it? Big Bang Theory, yeah. All right, they'll buy that, and in their contract it states that we are going to show Big Bang twenty two episodes of Big Bang series series five or six whatever they're up to. And we're going to show that in the years two thousand and twelve and two thousand thirteen. In other words, in Australia they tend to string it out. They'll play one new episode every four weeks a lot of the time, not all the time, and they'll put repeats in there in the meanwhile so they can string it out. In their contract states that that's what they're going to do, so the people in this, in America aren't allowed, don't allow Australian viewers to watch mm. their shows as they're released because they've got a contract with some dicky network, Hello Channel Nine, who want to <laughs> string it out over fucking two years. Although, ad- admittedly, something a lot of those shows now are getting better. There's like Thirty Rock gets or- released straight away. Number yeah, one. there's some things like Sherlock got done straight away. Yep. Um, Big Bang's only about two weeks behind. <laughs> so a lot of them are getting better, but there are still some shows that are months and months, if not years, behind. You know, and well, Mike, what about uh, what about uh, what what series are they up to with Top Gear at the moment? Um, well, they've just finished the last season. Which is on, what? 
17? In the UK, uh, 18? I can't remember what season it is, but that, it hasn't started here. No, that's what I'm getting at, it. yeah. I think yeah. here they're still halfway through season 17 and they've already finished season 18 in the UK. Yeah. Well, just and, the- and that's the thing, like, why don't, if you're, okay, we'll do a deal with Channel 9. Say, okay, well, Channel 9, for example, use Channel 9 because we're picking on them already. Look, we don't have any advertised, we don't have any free space available until December this year. We'll start showing it in December this year. If people want to watch it, we'll throw it up on our website. We'll charge them. Yes. Charge them 10 cents. And let I don't the, care what they charge. Just say, look, this is a preview price. You want to watch yeah. it earlier, hmm. pay a buck or whatever. If you want to watch it in slightly lower resolution um, off a website, by all means, go for it, you know. Just go to channel131.com. Because like I don't, because I don't, I, I like to do things. I like to do things the right way. Now, and it only occurred, and it just sort of crossed my mind the other night, and it just made me a little bit angry. It was um, like now I've been, I've been um, watching Alcatraz on Channel Nine. Yep. And then all of yes. a sudden, <laughs> I see that now at, it's now on at ten thirty at night. So yes, yeah. they've moved it. So they dicked Glenn, it around. But you know what? We're so far behind. They're about eight episodes behind. And same with Revenge. Yeah. In Revenge in America, they've already finished the season. It's yeah. 23 episodes. We're up to episode seven. But yeah. see, that sort of thing, that doesn't really worry me too much because, you know... Oh, it worries me. But it, but it doesn't worry me. <laughs> There's no excuse like, for it. Other, well, there isn't... Well, there is some excuse, but it, those things can be negotiated out. There's not really they're just, they're just too lazy. Every TV station has at least three channels and at least two of them show the same programming. But anyway, well, actually, we know what they do. The channels they they put their repeats on the HD channel, and they put their good <laughs> programs on the standard def channels. Now, yeah, they put is that smart? Put... Where are these? Where are these? Where, where are these people coming from? They should get their heads out of their asses and just do it the other way around. Look, that's been that's been a, a an annoyance of mine for ages. Is like they've got their their their, their jewel in the crown. Like so, they got the NRL, their state of origin. They'll have that yeah. on the standard deaf Which channel. They pay million. They pay two hundred million dollars or more for the rights to this, and they bang it on Gem. No, no, they ba- <laughs> they put on the standard deaf channel. Well, that's they, what I mean, standard deaf. They, yeah, that's right. And they put I Love Lucy in high deaf yeah, in Gem. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's 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 insanity. I don't understand what I the mean, hell is going on. Um, I mean, Lucy's never looked so good, but <laughs> still. About, same with Mr. Red, Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> but even even when the even when the cricket was you on, the, you can see the peanut butter. <laughs> now the cricket the cricket last summer, right? When the cricket was on, they, they, when the when your when your station went for the news at six o'clock, they threw the cricket onto Gem, so you either could watch the cricket yeah. or the news. So you turn, which was which was right, which not is a good. Silly idea. But no, that no. was good. But then when you turn it to Gem, gee, how much better is the picture for watching the cricket? And then as soon as six thirty comes, yeah. and slap it back off. They flick it back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, good and old, and good old well De- Desi Arnaz slipped on a banana. All right, yeah, now. that's right. And I saw that it was a very yellow banana because the resolution was so freaking good. <laughs> that's right. Now, but, but I couldn't see the cricket ball. It looked like a football. The resolution was just pixelated. <laughs> cricket ball looked like a football. Now, I caught, I caught, I caught. Like, yes. Can we move on off that right. one? Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. A court, a court in Hamburg ruled that YouTube is responsible for the content that users post to the video sharing site. It wants the video site to install filters that spot when users try to post music clips whose rights are already held uh, by royalty collection group Gemma. The German industry group said that the court, in court, that YouTube had not done enough to stop copyrighted clips being posted. Now, music streaming site GrooveShack has already pulled out of Germany, claiming the licensing rate set by the Gemma made it impossible to run a profit. And I'll tell you what, if they're going to start dicking around with all this crap as well, well, YouTube will probably just switch off Germany and then they'll be crying their little eyes out as well. Oh, yeah, you know what? You know, this is, this is, this, the, the, if there anyone here is thinking of doing anything similar to this, take note. People just pull out. You tax, you cannot tax a country into prosperity. So wake up federal government. I bet you they're looking at any different ways to go, oh, how can we get this? Groove Shark are pulled out of Germany. That's it. They'll pull out of here too. Everyone will pull out of here. Too expensive to do business. See you later. Yep. 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 Now let, let's move on to the probably the last. Uh, did you have any other stories, Eric? Because we probably should have covered this at the no, start. No, I think we should talk show. about. I think we should all talk about G Drive. Yes. Because I think it's yes. very important. Yeah, it is very important. We probably should have pushed it up further, but uh, but anyway, uh, Google G Drive, the Drive, Google Drive, online cloud storage is here. Have you got your installation, Eric and Will? Yes. I. I have my installation. 
Um, but unfortunately, as yet, it my G, my drive isn't actually activated. So when you click on it on your Android, at least it still comes up the same as the old Google Docs used to. Um, right. But it's changed the icon. It's it, everything's in the back end because the file size has got about four times bigger. So it's just going to be a matter now until the account actually gets activated. So I, I think I'll just run through a couple of specs because uh, I think Eric's got a uh, he's got something he wants to bring up, which is very I've got important. The legal, I've got the legal ramifications of this. You can so, talk about the pretty side. I'll talk about the <laughs> okay. ugly side. So the, the G drive, you, you, I think I'm not sure what the, even the address is, but if you go to Google, you'll find it. Just, just do it. Drive.google.com. The app will be, will be first made available to Mac, Windows and Android users with an iOS app expected in the coming weeks. So uh, hang on to your hats. Now... G Drive also. This is a very. This is a very. Uh, oh, I'd call it impressive feature. Search by keyword and filter by file type, owner, and more. <laughs> Drive can recognise text in scanned documents using optical ca- character recognition technology. So that means, so if you scan a newspaper article, you can then actually search that when you're searching your Google Docs. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. That's good. That's fine. Users will get five gig of free storage. That's good. Now, there's new plans, however. New plans have come out. Now, you might be saying that you're on the old plan, and that, like me, I was on the old plan, and I was $5 a year for 20 gig. whoopee do, because now it's uh, $2.49 a month for 25 gig. So, but the good news is if that you're on an old plan, they are going to grandfather it, and it will stay at $5 for 20 gig for a year, year on year, as long as you keep your account active, you don't change it, yep. You don't let your credit card details lapse because as soon as something happens, you're gone. So um, make you're sure gone. your expiry date and your credit card's up to date with the, with the Google wallet or whatever the hell they call it. But um, now to give you some example of some pricing, I'll just quickly go through these and I'll see if I can get them up on the screen for you because that's uh, what we like doing around here. So there you go. So pricing structures. So two dollars forty nine a month for twenty five gig, all the way up to eight hundred dollars a month for sixteen terabytes. Massive, massive. You can actually go for further than that too. Yeah, right. They've just they've just released their hundred terabyte plan. Oh, who's going to do hundred terabyte? <laughs> Jesus, what a mega upload. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> Jeez, it took it took me uh, like six months just to back up my stuff to crash plan. I only had. You better have you have you better have a forty. You better have, MBN bring it on. That's what I say. <laughs> So um, now in, uh, around the traps, there's uh, Microsoft so- SkyDrive, there's Dropbox, and there's the other ones that we've mentioned earlier before. Yeah, but Microsoft's box. paid storage plans begin at ten dollars a year for uh, for anything over twenty gig. So um, so you, so if you're if you're looking as money concerns, if you're the the penny pincher, you might want to go and look at Microsoft before you go look at the drive. Um, well. Well, Dropbox yes, is pretty good too, isn't it? Dropbox is, yeah, it's only 90, 5 gig or something. 99 a year well, or something? Gigs for 50 a year, is it? Is that what Dropbox is? 50 bucks for 50 gigs? Uh, no, sure that's uh, $25 like. a year for that. that. That's Microsoft. Microsoft has also updated its SkyDrive app for Windows, phone, and iOS devices, along with a beta version of Apple's latest app for the Lion. Um, they have Dropbox oh, on Monday. 50 gigs on Dropbox is 100 bucks a year. Yeah, it's about 100 bucks. That's right. Now, Dropbox on Monday has announced a new link service that generates a URL for users to share videos and pictures that can be viewed through any browser and download if required. And I don't, from what I hear, Eric doesn't like linking to these things. But um, but yeah, no. Google. Now, a problem that I had earlier on that we uh, nutted out, Eric, didn't we? We Eric nutted it out for me. Yes, we did. Was I couldn't get any Office documents to sync to the drive. Didn't matter what I did, couldn't get them any. It couldn't, could not get them to sync. So anyway, what the problem was was I had previously installed a Google, a Google Cloud Sync app into the Office environment, and because it was already syncing through this plugin, it wasn't syncing through the normal Drive plugin. So I uninstalled the plugin, and away I went, syncing up like. So if you've got a plugin, get rid of it if you're going to use G- uh, Google Drive. That's right. So um, look, there's a few things around. It's all exciting. It's all you know. Google Drive is out. It's uh. You know, it's where it Frost, is. Frosty in the chat room is just asking what the uh, upload limit size is. Um, no, no limits. I haven't found, yeah, I haven't found any official limit on that, but th- there is one guy I was reading about, and he successfully uploaded a 10 gig zip file. So, right. oh, it's true. Well, I don't think it's, I think it's just an overall limit rather than an individual yeah. file, file size limit. Now, but yes. The ugly part, all very is. nice, and I think it's good, but 
I won't be using it for certain documents for this reason. Here's their terms of service. Now, you've got to read this, people. It's very important, especially if you've got certain documents. You go, oh, that's good. I'll have a cloud service for my clients. No, you won't. It says here, you retain ownership of any intellectual property rights that you hold in that content. Okay, good so far. In short, what belongs to you stays yours. When you upload or otherwise submit content to our services, you give Google, and this is the important bit, and those we work with a worldwide license to use, host, store, reproduce, modify, create derivative works, communicate, publish, publicly perform, publicly display, and distribute such content. Now, that's now, uh, pretty w- wide reaching. I won't be putting my client's financial information on Google Drive, let me tell you that Most right of those terminologies purely comes down to them storing and recreating backups and moving it from server to server and yeah, changing Yeah, but it's too it's too vague for me if if I get if this if my stuff gets hacked into because someone got it because someone got lazy I'm not going to the can because Google's a punch because I mean, Google's a pack of dicks. You read mm. any terms of service Microsoft um, open office the whole lot and they basically all say that. It's... No, they don't mate. I've got Microsoft's right here in front of me. In Dropbox. Yeah, so Dropbox in so, oh, in Dropbox. You retain full. This is Dropbox. You retain full ownership of your stuff. We don't claim any ownership to any of these. These terms do not grant us any rights to your stuff or intellectual property, except for limited rights that needed to run the services, as explained below. Right, and below it says that we won't distribute, we won't make public, blah 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 blah. Microsoft is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Google's so, ones is typical Google. They want your data because they want to be able to serve ads. Mm. That's yep. the whole point of wanting that data. But I can't. It's yours, but, but they have Gmail. the right to mine that data, and I don't want anyone but mining Gmail. that data. They just yeah, Gmail's the same. Bots. That's yeah. why I don't run my office office uh, client stuff through Gmail. So how did you know? You, like, you probably don't know, but is like um, is uh, live mail is is that. The, the same issues there, or is it because it falls under a Microsoft? Well, Live Mail might be like Gmail because it let it uh, serve you ads, but yeah. SkyDrive is is very is locked down. But I don't see a problem in just like with uh, being able to say read what's what say on the screen to serve you up ads. I can't see that I really have a problem with that. I've got a problem. I don't care about that. I don't, I don't give a shit about that. But I don't want my stuff on the cl- on a cloud server yeah. being data mined. Because that's that's financial information of my clients. But essentially, what they're saying, I think, from what I gather from what you were just saying in those terms and conditions, is that like if they wanted to, like say 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 you were running a private eye um, office, you know, a private eye firm, you got a few yeah, pictures. They can hand it over. Well, not just hand, but they like, have probably have to hand it over under under some sort of law anyway. Well, under I'm, law, you'd have to hand it over, but, regardless of where it's held. Under law, you'd have to hand it but over. But I mean, but the, so you know, ten years in the future, maybe someone's plugged in a Google search or something or whatever, and all of a sudden, some some of these private fo- pictures have come up because they've mined it and they go, oh, well, we'll show them. Or they, or or something happens, someone becomes famous that you've taken a picture of, and they go, oh, I've got, oh, remember that little that we've got him down here when he was five yeah. or something, you know? That's what I think is is wrong. They shouldn't be able. Yeah, let, look. I, it, to me, that that clause is a bit too vague and a little bit too open, a little bit too ambiguous. And uh, and until they basically cut that whole clause out, saying that we will not reproduce, modify, or create derivative works. I mean, you know, if I upload a photo of of um, my family uh, on a holiday, they can they can create an ad because that's that's derivative works. Mm. They can create an ad to advertise Hawaii because that's where I was without mm. my permission. Well, Facebook does the same thing. But Facebook had to if change. If you let them. But but Facebook, there's, an, there's, an opt, there's an opt out on Facebook. There's not yeah, on this. Yeah, I bet you that works well. But Facebook yeah, had does. to change. I don't, I don't get <laughs> sued any ads. But Facebook had to change their terms and conditions too because of a very similar uh, thing. And of course, yeah, they, they did. Well, Dropbox had to change theirs as well. When they first started out, they realized that they were getting a lot of flack. Mm. So the same, the same thing will happen here. This is so, probably this is so. Prob- just be careful. Is all I'm saying. Look, I reckon what what's going to happen here is that this is just the the all encompassing terms and conditions. And like, hey, if you can get them passed by by the public, why the hell not try? And then water them down. Oh, there's and, yeah, uh, that's the as, Facebook as and the Google mentality. Yeah. Let's slip it in there. If no one notices, we're sweet. It's evil. Uh, but people people have noticed. Yeah. 
It's evil. Um, so yeah, yeah. No and what isn't that? Isn't their motto "Don't be evil"? That's right. It's not yeah, being evil. It's being lazy. Yeah. Well, lazy <laughs> equals evil. The devil's mind, an idle mind, is the devil's playground. Lazy but, equals evil. You know, the thing is, even if people have noticed, you know, how many people actually care? You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't notice. They business, don't. You know, they don't even. They don't even read the terms. I don't. General. I mean, I I do from. You know, from a standpoint of knowing them for the show and things like that, but I don't read them for my own benefit mm. because I want to use the software. I'm going to use it regardless of what the terms are. Look, I don't think many right. businesses will be using this no, that way. But I mean, well, the business one is probably different because if you actually have a Google Apps business, whatever they call it, their their business account, um, it's all locked down. It's a, it's a whole different range of products anyway. So um, I don't trust them. I still don't trust them. That's I what all the unis and a lot, of the, a lot of the government departments and unis and all that are going to now. They're going to the to the privatized Google Docs, nah, uh, or Google, suite. Well, that's, Google Apps. So, yeah, it's Google Apps App Suite or something. Yeah. that's probably not. That may. I, I will not, never use them. I don't trust Google. That's maybe not. Trust them. That may be not too much far off the mark there, will because like you know if they're going to give you something for free, hey, this is just a catch. So. So maybe maybe that's how it yeah. goes. Well, that's it. Now just uh, just quickly, Eric, you got a couple of stories there left in your little in your little file. Um, so Apple CEO Tim what Cook, you want? Uh, Tim Cook emerges from Steve Jobs' shadow. Uh, Apple CEO yes, Tim he's, Cook. Yes, uh, yeah. he's uh, he's got he's got a little bit of his own personality. He's uh, described, um, well, not described. He's implied that Microsoft's um, products are um, what do you call it? Here we go. What did he call it? Toaster and a something? Toaster right. and a fridge. Right. <laughs> yeah, and um, so so what? He's, he's essentially he's bagging them. He's imp- the implication is that he, he's bagging them. He's, he's he's come out. He's a little bit more um, feisty. You know, he's got mm. a little bit of the jobs in him. I think he must have um, maybe this, had um, a blood transfusion. This but, <laughs> this particular <laughs> comment uh, came uh, when he was asked if PCs and tablets might someday blend into the one device. Uh, like uh, rival PC manufacturers hope now Cook ex what's that word ex temporized this response right here I'll mark it for you um, I think anything can be forced to converge the problem is that products are both trade offs and you begin to make trade offs to the point where that you all you have left at the end of the day doesn't please anyone anyone you can, you can converge a toaster and a refrigerator but those things are probably not going to be pleasing to the user. The toaster fridge combo phrase zoomed around Twitter, and within minutes, someone created a fridge toaster account that started talking back at Cook. Oh. Yeah, well, he's basically having a go at Microsoft there. Now, what? Why your Wi-Fi network is never safe? Fifty uh, percent of you, uh, you Australian internet subscribers, um, serious concerns are being raised about the security of the wireless systems and the ease of hacking. Well, I don't know about that. I thought it was all pretty good. Well, that, it's basically saying that a lot of the routers have all – look, for example, if you buy a um, router from up, up where you are, it's, they call it a D-Link, and, it's, and I buy the exact same D-Link router, and Will buys the exact D-Link router, and everyone buys the same. The password and the username is exactly the same. They and a lot of people same. don't change them. <laughs> They've yeah. just got to be the same company. I've got yeah. numerous different Netgear, D-Link, Linksys, um, Cisco. And they're all the same. And they're all as bad as each other. Yeah, Actually, they're all the same. Ironically, the only one I noticed that was different was my Optus Netgear modem. It, it's the only one, because I've got two of those, and they come with different passwords. They're the only ones I've seen that have. So No, mate, mate no well, one's ever going to break into that because Optus is never up and running. <laughs> so, Actually, they've been really good lately. I haven't had any oh, problems good. at all. But also the, the Telstra, but, the yes, Telstra uh, one. A lot of people are ignorant of this. Look, you and I in, the, in our audience knows how to get in there and change your passwords or make it a um, an invisible yeah. SSID and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, for the, for the layman out there, you can walk. You, I mean, everyone's done it. I've done it. Drive down the street with a laptop and just go Wi-Fi hunting. It's not that hard. Mm. Well, that's actually what Queensland police are doing. They're actually driving because <laughs> it's a great use of police power. They're driving around all the streets with Wi-Fi sniffer, sniffers and any they're telling Wi-Fi telling everyone that you're open. exposed. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually putting a letter 
in your letterbox saying this is the problem, this is how to fix it. And then if they come back again in, I think it's three weeks or something, and find that it's still open, they can find you apparently now. There's some new oh, really? some new law that allows them to find is it you. Campbell before... Newman's first first act of parliament, is it? No, it was before he took over. It's been going on for a few months now. Um, but, that's yeah, apparently bit, they can find bit, you for... That's a bit rough, isn't it? Pub for... Uh, Potential security breach, potential national security breach, or something. Oh, that's hard. That's heavy going. <laughs> it's a yeah. bit rude, that's given that. Going. Given Jeez, that, wow. um, is that Anna Bly, the socialist monk? Are you <laughs> sitting in an atheist chair? Are you? Are you? Yeah. Uh, is that something because they're uh, maybe something to do with the Telecommunications Act? They're rebroadcasting a an open service like no, a, a, it's, oh, a, I don't know well, that, but I think oh, they it's had nothing mainly, else better to do. They just think of stuff. Right. Right. I think it's mainly because they say that it can be, you know, somebody can produce some do something illegal on your internet connection, and it's going to be your fault if they do. And it's like, you know, well, how's uh, yeah. my Look, I, I, I know what you're getting at. I'm saying if someone does something illegal and they use your connection, yeah, um, then you're you're um, an accessory to that crime unknowingly. But doesn't Hence, it go that you way? should if, do whatever you can to make Wi-Fi sure that you is, don't become an accessory. If my Wi-Fi is open, and several you know every person in the neighborhood has access to it and if something illegal does happen they'd be pretty hard pressed to prove who it was well that's what they don't want <laughs> they don't want i'd be i'd uh, be you know they don't want a suspects list as long as your arm <laughs> i'd be claiming that's this, the problem i'd be claiming uh precedence as in the ii net case i was transmitting i had no, no idea what they were doing so That's go. right. Yeah. And look, on my uh, Glenn, you'd have this on yours too. But on the on the thing that Telstra gave us, there's a the gen, generic um, Wi-Fi that the whole family can access, and there's the guest Wi-Fi, oh, and all you get access to is the internet, but nothing else. I've never but you still need a password. But they don't have access to your files or your server or you know any of your computers. So you can set up a guest Wi-Fi. They still need the password, but. You look, know. I haven't even gone that far. But look, all I know is is that uh, Telstra, the, the, their uh, little um, their little routers, they seem to come with all the all the security already set up because you get a little card, and there's a little card. Mm, yeah, and they're all okay. What's and, your? Uh, you want to read me out your security? Because yeah, I've go. changed mine. I'll, yeah, there you go. Have you changed yours? <laughs> oh, of course. I want to see. All right, okay. E D D. I'll see if mine's the same one. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be different. It won't be. Di- it won't be the same. No, it's a different yeah, one. No. Yeah, yeah. So look, Telstra's Telstra's got the got the thing going. At least, at least they give you a short one. Optus used the bloody the sixty four bit code or whatever it is. So there's like one hundred and twenty eight bloody letters. So if you ever do a modem reset, you sit there for half an hour typing in the new password yeah. so you can change it back again. I'll show you. I'll show. You, I'll, 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 I'll do. A, you know, the good shortcut for that is well, you get that card that they've written it on. And you scan it and convert it to a PDF. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's true. And then you save that file, and then you open it PDF file, and you can just cut and copy and paste that word and bang it in. I did. Well, I, did, I just typed it into a notebook. Same thing, but yeah. It's, yeah. Or um, type it in and leave it on a file somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. But it's like it's a pain in the ass. Like seriously, it's a default password. You really need that many. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's their way of keeping their access down. So if people get the shit, they just Although, won't go on the internet. How is your... I don't your... know if you can see... Yeah, go, Will. Hey? I was, oh, you go. I was going to ask you how your internet was going. I was going to say, I don't know if... I'll turn my camera around. You probably can't see it. Probably won't come out, no. But you can see on the back of... You know, you oh, that's the same see. one I've got. You've there's got a, a piece of pus of, as well. Yeah, I haven't put the other one on yet. I haven't needed to. This one's working fine. But there's um, actually barcodes on the back of that. And um, one of those barcodes is actually the uh, the... the password so if you've got a barcode scanner or a phone like i do that you can scan the barcode into you can do it that way as well um yeah my internet has been good actually it's it's really bizarre since they sent me out the new modem and i threatened them that they're annoying me basically um they i haven't actually put the new modem in i haven't had a single dropout in like you know nearly two months and i haven't actually done anything so the problem was obviously at their end yeah that's all and right. obviously. I've said that you've watched my think, connection um, I'll drop out <laughs> I don't think what's his name said he problems oh, what's he Aussie Aussie no I think he's he's sorted himself out as well down there well they've sorted him out so um yeah so that's good but anyway we better get out of here it's been uh Will's back it's been a long show 
and uh, we better go. I just got a, just quickly before we go, I just got a uh, really important, urgent, must open email from, I don't know, someone. And uh, they're selling dummy iPad 2 with functioning buttons for $16. Oh, Save 50%. Why the hell would you want one of them? But oh, why the why, why, why the hell? What subscription list are you on, mate? Uh, it's it's Dragon AXT. They normally send out useful stuff, but this particular one is full of uh, dummy iPad twos, um, cheating poker glasses. What what operating system lenses. are they running on those iPads? <laughs> um. No, it's Mac. It's, oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's well, actually it's sure. the iOS, but I think it's like the first one. <laughs> oh, that's pass. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty neat. I nearly bought an iPad three, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's just about done us. It's been uh, it's been a big show. And uh, it's time to go. So, all right. So, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks to uh, techwebcast.info. They've got the uh, show on before Aussie Tech Heads every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, you can join the, you can download a paper twice a day, two editions, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. If you want to want to read some tech news, some up to date tech news in a nice, easy magazine style format, go and check that out. Don't forget the video of the show, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub, or just to just click on the, the video on the front of the uh, AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. The latest video is always up there from Friday, each Friday. Uh, Will's getting his head back around the radio. And uh, Twitter's Eric, Eric at Eric Frank. What are you? At Eric with a K, Franco. <laughs> e-R, E-R, at E-R-I-K-F-R-A-N-C-O. Will? At, I have at, no idea. It's been like a month. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Will at Mr. Tomkinson and me at Aussie no, Techheads. There you Will go. Will at Aussie, uh, t- uh, TBT Secret Hub. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you another thing just quietly. And when people take things over, like Microsoft took Skype over, and also another thing that's died up the backside oh. is TweetDeck. I miss TweetDeck. Well, Twitter, can you leave it alone? Bring yep. back the old one. It's dead. It doesn't work. It doesn't even refresh. For me, it's crap. And I've moved on. And the thing I moved yeah. on to now has got invalid certificates. So who knows? I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm off the Twitter. I'm off. I'm off. I can't handle it. What, what do you <laughs> use as your client, Will, on your desktop? Just quickly. On my desktop, um, I just use um, the Google Chrome plugin um, for TikTok. It works really well. Okay. I just use a browser. It's actually a, a Chrome Store plugin. Yeah, the browser-based plugin. Um, it's oh, fantastic. That it it behaves itself. TweetDeck is pus now. It used to be my favourite. Now it's pus. Even Hoops. TweetDeck app. The TweetDeck program is. Yeah, the TweetDeck program is horrible, but the Google Chrome built-in app works really well. Right. All right. Good stuff. All right. We better get out of here. The dog's crying. It's hungry as. No T's arrive for it. It's gonna. It's gonna. <laughs> I don't know, shake itself to death. It's really hungry. All right, so until next time. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Will. Are we going to see you next week? See you next week. I hope so. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, Lounge, and thanks, listeners. Thanks, podcasters. Woohoo! See you then. Bye-bye.